would really encourage you to draw this well. So let's think this through. We've got a spring-loaded launcher on a table, and we know the mass of the ball. There's the ball, and that's 21 grams. All right, you're going to compress the spring 21 centimeters. So that's the change in X, 21 centimeters. Watch that. It's going to have to be converted to meters. And it is a 1.6 meter um, height table. And as it launches, it launches and it lands a distance of 5.1 meters. So you may have slightly different numbers, but... This is how we set this up. So the question is, is what is the spring constant? Now let's think about this. What energy does it have at the beginning of this experiment? You've got the potential energy of the spring. Remember the potential energy or the spring potential energy is one half kx squared, where x is the 21 in meters. So you're actually trying to solve for k. Right? But also on this launcher, you've also got you've got MGH. So you've got the potential energy of the so this this is the total energy, I should say energy. Is gonna be the spring. Well that's the spring, and we've also got the U of gravity, which is MGH, which H is 1.6 and 9.8, and we know the mass of this. So this is our total energy before if you add these two bad boys up. All right, and we know that he lands out here some distance away. You see, what I'd like to know is I'd like to know how much speed he leaves this from. So we have to jump and play a little bit of kinematics um, uh, deal. So if you think about this for a moment, if I take a ball and I just drop it, I'm trying to find some time. How much time does it take for the ball to drop? Since it's only going to be... Um, launched horizontally, right? I want to find the time. So I can say y2 equals y1 plus vyt plus one half at squared. Now on this, the vy is zero because it doesn't have any y velocity. It's going to have x velocity. And so y2 is zero equals 1.6 or whatever plus one half times negative 9.8 times t squared. So find the time first, and once you've found the time, you can then say, if I know it traveled 5.1 meters, I can use the second equation, just like this, but the x equation, and say x2 equals x1 plus vxt plus one-half at squared. Remember the a is going to, in this case, the a is zero because it has no acceleration in the x, only in the y direction. I know what x2 is, x2 is 5.1, and that's zero plus vy times t. Now this t is going to be the t that you get from here, and that will be the velocity that it has here. Does that make sense? So then what I did to solve the problem is I just said, it has no kinetic energy at this point, so all of the spring energy got converted into kinetic energy. So what I can say is I can say, actually, I don't necessarily need this, I don't think. I can just say 1 half kx squared is equal to, yeah, 1 half mv squared. And you're going to put, we now, but this v is the v that you got when you solved this equation, right? You got 5.1 equals vy times this time. That's the v that's going to go in here. You know the mass. Make sure you convert to kilograms. You know the x. Make sure you convert to meters. You have everything except for the k. The halves actually cancel. And don't forget there's squares here, and you should be able to get the answer.